Welcome back to the Paddle and Fin Podcast Network. We're brought to you by Yak Gadget. For all your kayak fishing accessory needs, go to yakgadget.com. Pelican cases, coolers, and lighting. Go to pelican.com. The 153 Bait Company. For all your hard and soft bait needs, go to the 153anglers.com. Now let's get this show started. Hey, and welcome back to Off the Water. Happy New Year's to everyone listening. Uh, you know, 2021 is in the past now. We're right into 2022. And, uh, man, what a hell of a year it's been. Uh, you know, I if you guys were listening, I, I skipped a week um, of releases before the break. I did come down with, uh, with the coronavirus. So uh, that's why there wasn't an episode the last time on my air date. So for those who are anticipating one, I'm sorry, but we're jumping into 2022. We're going to have a great list of people uh, who we're going to be uh, interviewing and going and doing some international shows too. But before we go international, uh, this one I'm really excited for, guys. I want to welcome our guest, Ryan Lilly from Maine. Uh, Ryan, he is uh, pretty much has – if, you, if you're in the kayak fishing community and you see anything related with Old Town, uh, that's Ryan. Ryan is the man behind the scenes. And – it's an honor and a pleasure to have him on the show today. So without any further ado, Ryan, welcome to Off the Water, buddy. How are you? Hey, thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Um, I, I do have to correct you. Uh, you. You may see my face more than most, but we are a, a team, and uh, we have a very talented team over here. And uh, just so happens to be my job that I get to talk in front of the camera more than most. But, uh, yeah, it's an honor to be on here, and uh, thanks for inviting me. Oh, not a problem, man. So Old Town, I mean, over the last, over the course of the last two years or so, really has jumped and exploded, um, you know, with the release of the uh, Autopilot and Sportsman series, man. Uh, so uh, for you, how's that been, uh, you know, how's that going? Uh, I know you've had your hands full. Yeah. Oh man. It's been a really exciting two years. I mean, it's been a hard, you know, the world has experienced some, some weird things the last couple of years. Uh, but, uh, it's been really good for our brand. Uh, you know, we, we had some tailwinds going into the COVID period. Um, but, uh, you know, it's been really good. It's, it's just so encouraging to see the trend of, you know, the popularity, the rise and growth of, uh, kayak fishing, uh, has obviously propelled a lot of the success for the sportsman line and for our brand, but, it just overall people want to be outside and on the water and um you know being in a kayak or canoe is one of the most socially distant things you can do so really it's the rising tide that has lifted all boats i know we're not the only company that's experiencing success right now but uh yeah we we've had an incredible few years uh the sportsman line hit at just the right time our product offering you know has something for everyone whether you're entering the sport for the first time on a budget or if uh, you're looking to add to your fleet, or if you need something specific like a pedal drive, or you're looking to upgrade to a motorized kayak, it has something for everyone. And uh, so really by launching that Sportsman line with you know the flagship model autopilot at the top of the, um, the pyramid, you know, it really just hit at the right time um, you know, with what the angler wants. Absolutely. Myself and uh, one of your guys' pro staffers, Mike Munoz, uh, we were one of the first two to get our hands on uh, the autopilot 136s um, here in Illinois, so we, you know, we were—I mean, everywhere we went, we had our heads, you know, heads were turning when they saw our kayaks being pushed by the Minkota out on the water. So uh, it was, yeah, it, you know, of course that brought up a lot. I was at the boat launch a lot longer than I wanted to be uh, while trying to get <laughs> stuff ready to go home or go out and launch. So, but it, I mean, it. it you know, it's the best fishing vessel I've ever been in. I was in a prior to PDL before uh, going into my autopilots. And now this is uh, going to be my third season with the autopilot from the time it's been released. I got to get it washed and cleaned up because it's going to be on display at our uh, the Schaumburg Fishing Convention show. Or it's oh, cool. pretty much the biggest one in, in the Midwest. So it'll be on display with uh, Rocktown Adventures, uh, the kayak awesome. fishing team I'm with. So yeah, I hear uh, great things about that show. I've yet to go, but uh, 
I've heard that that's one that you can't miss. No, it's it's a lot of fun, and you know it draw uh, it draws a lot of big names. I mean, we had Jordan Lee, um, Brandon Polinick have have been at the show. I've got to meet all those guys, and yeah, you, know, you know, even uh, back in the day when Zona was making you know making his, you had Zona there. Um, Van Dam has made appearances there, so it, it, it's one of the bigger shows in the Midwest. Awesome. So Ryan, tell us a little bit about yourself, dude. Uh, you're look, you're to Maine, but let's before we get into that, let's talk about fishing. Uh, give us a little bit background. Yeah, sure. Um, so I, I live in Maine. Uh, that's where Old Town's based. That's where I grew up. Uh, I have lived elsewhere. I lived in Florida for a stint, and I I've lived uh, out in Seattle, Washington for a few years. But uh, started having kids and wanted to move home and be close to family and. Um, you know, it's such a great place. Uh, you know, I grew up fishing trout streams and, and bass lakes here in Maine. And, you know, it's such a unique place and it's been a great place to cut your teeth as an outdoorsman, just because you have, you know, fresh and salt water fishing an opportunity at your fingertips within an hour drive, really in either direction. If you live in the central part of the state, uh, and also it's got other things too, like love, I love to hunt. So I do a lot of hunting. I just wrapped up whitetail season, and uh, so we have a lot of deer. And, and if you get lucky enough to get drawn for a moose tag, turkey, you know, it's got a lot of opportunities as a sportsman and trapping too. Like we still have a strong trapping community up here, and so it's just like a sportsman's paradise. And that's that's where I call home. Um, I've been at Old Town for uh, coming up on six years. I've been with Old Town, uh, and I'm just super proud to be here. You know, as a Mainer, it's like you think about like. Nike is to Oregon what Old Town or LL Bean is to Maine. You know, it's just like our it's yeah. our brand. You know, um, so super um, fortunate, and uh, you know, I'm, I think about it every time I, I drive into the parking lot how fortunate and grateful I am to work for such a renowned, you know, just a, a, a company that's done such great things over the last 120 plus years that we've been in existence. And so yeah, I've been here for six years and been in the outdoor space uh, career wise. Uh, since college, I've uh, been in the outdoor industry and, and can't imagine working anywhere else. So sweet. Um, so you, you said you had mentioned within an hour of anywhere you're at for uh, for water access. So when you're in Maine, what do you uh, where are you fishing, man? Where, where where do you like to go and what do you like to chase after? Yeah, you know, it all depends on the season. Um, you know, I, I love, love, love striper fishing and striper bite really kicks off you can start catching them as early as mid-may um you know in, so in the southern portion of the state and you can follow the migration they they, they migrate up our coastline and uh, really the the hottest time to catch stripers in maine is like june through mid-july so you can catch me uh you know once once uh the striper bite is hot i'm i'm chasing stripers as much as possible in that june time frame and that's one of my favorite things to, to chase and to catch but i also do a lot of fly fishing in the spring right when we uh the streams start to open up we have some legendary uh trout streams i think Maine, the stat is we're you know the home of like 90 percent of the native brook trout population is exists in maine so we have a, an amazing uh, trout and landlocked salmon fishery. So in the springtime, before lakes really start opening up and are safe enough to get out on the kayak, uh, I'm doing a lot of fly fishing in the streams. And then again, you know, uh, that pre-spawn to spawn time frame, I'm chasing bass and then stripers turn on. I fish stripers all summer. Um, and then I travel a lot for work. So, you know, I'm fishing bass or I'm going uh, offshore fishing Fort Lauderdale for, for things or in Florida or, or West yeah. Coast for for um, salmon. So I love, you know, experiencing different fisheries and going to different places. But, you know, really stripers probably like my 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 first love uh, out of a kayak here uh, in Maine. Uh, but, you know, I just you can't beat our smallmouth fishery either. Like the smallmouth fishing up here is <laughs> They're like footballs up here. So. Yeah, I, you know, I, I love chasing it all, but, you know, if I had to pick my favorite, it'd be stripers. Yeah, you know what, man? Uh, so this season, you know, and I've been kind of researching our waters here in Illinois, and there's so, and you have to really look and see. We have a lot of uh, nuclear energy plants that have waters uh, that they use as cooling lakes. Some Now, the ones that are close to me do not it, – it's restricted, actually – you can only go out on there with a gas-powered uh, motor. 
so you can't bring your kayaks. However, further south, uh, there are some that that have um, wipers uh, that are stocked and huge. So that is on my uh, bucket list to catch uh, a big wiper too. Um, and they're saying you could get, you know, up. They've been caught twenty eight to thirty inches uh, in some of those uh, coaling plants. So that's uh, that's a bucket list to catch in the uh, in my autopilot is getting a big wiper as well. Yeah, I've caught, I've caught, you know, it's fun because I, I, I've, I've gone after wipers and hybrids, I guess hybrids, wipers, um, and inland stripers, you know, in, in various states, like I've, I've done striper fishing in, in Arkansas, I've done wiper fishing in Illinois, and, um, you know, it's a ton of fun and it's very relatable uh, to what we're experiencing on the coast. I target them a little bit differently uh, inland, but uh, yeah, they're, they're very much a similar uh, fight and feel for sure. And, um, I don't know why it's not more popular, you know, than it is, uh, because those opportunities are pretty prevalent. And I didn't realize that until I started traveling more for this job. Oh yeah, man. It's, uh, you know, it's cool because when I was younger, we used to go to some of those, uh, the cooling lakes that I was telling you about beforehand that are close to us and catch them from shore, but catch them from a kayak and heck even having some pull you for a ride. You know, that's the one, that's what you can't beat, man. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, I caught, actually, my personal best striper came from Illinois. I was fishing, uh, um, I was fishing down around Peoria, and uh, okay. I hooked into one. I was bass fishing, and I saw wipers blowing up on the surface, which is odd and, and rare, and you don't really see that very often. And I just casted, I had a chatterbait on, and I hooked into, it was, I don't know, probably 38 inch wiper, uh, which my, yeah. And it took me for a ride and it was surprising and it was exciting. And we got it on camera and it was super exciting. Um, but, uh, yeah, that, that was, uh, I was like, man, I, I don't know why I don't see more of this, more people doing this out of a kayak in the Midwest. Cause it, that, that was hard to beat. <laughs> I, I think I know where you're at and I'm just going to say it starts with an F and ends with an N. <laughs> yeah, that says it all <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah that, was, that was a fun trip that was a really fun trip mm -hmm. cool cool so uh what are you so i obviously i you, we see a lot in the autopilot uh what else are you uh pushing around too personally uh yeah I, you know i love the autopilot 136 i mean that platform is just hard to beat if you got the if you if you get the setup be able to transport it around you know transportation is a challenge for a boat that size mm -hmm. but if you got a truck or trailer and you're able to get an autopilot 136 i mean i know you know it's really hard to beat uh in yep. the spring i do quite a bit i've mounted a um uh downrigger on my autopilot i do a lot of trolling for landlocked salmon in brook trout in the spring and i've grown to really love that platform for trolling um and also it's great for tidal stuff i'll go out and fish stripers i'm able to spot lock on an outgoing tide and just slay uh, stripers on an outgoing tide where before with a pedal drive or a paddle kayak, it was uh, next to impossible. And some of those, those tidal um, swings yeah. that were, you know, experiencing six plus knot uh, tides. So uh, I love that platform for very specific things. Also great for bass fishing, but I, I, one of my favorite boats and it's grown in popularity. I'm really happy to see that it's grown in popularity because it's such an awesome platform is the salty. That boat okay. is um, really nimble, and it's the fastest pedal drive in our lineup. If you were to if you were to pull up beside a 106, a 120 pedal, a big water, the salty um, is faster than all of those hulls. Um, and I do a lot of fishing in Florida, and that's a really fun one in wavy, rough, current <laughs> conditions, windy conditions, because it just it slices through the water. It's really playful um and uh, at the end of the day it's it's really pleasant to to maneuver off the water like car top in that thing or throw it in the back of the truck it's really light compared to some of the other boats in our lineup so i really like that boat a lot and just you know when we uh we originally launched that that hull under the ocean kayak line and uh as a recreational pedal drive and once we added rod holders to that and blew out the uh stern tank well to make it accommodate those tackle crates and coolers and things like that. It really turned it into a fishing machine. So that one right there is a sleeper. It has been a sleeper in our lineup that's grown in popularity. Um, outside of that, I really love the big water pedal. 
Um, you okay. know, I'm going to be fishing uh, the Great Lakes. Um, if I'm going offshore a couple miles um, and I'm going to pedal, that's that's my boat of choice. It uh, it's just such a solid platform. You got all kinds of uh, rigability on that platform. Um, you get a big uh, open uh, uh, cockpit area that's deep. And so, you know, if you're trying to measure a fish, you need to get a fish into your boat. You don't, you know, you don't worry about it flopping out on you once it's in that deep cavernous hull that you're in. Um, and then, you know, if you're going on longer excursions, like I'll do some, some overnights um, and I can pack that bow hatch full of stuff and it stays dry. And uh, so I love that boat. Uh, I think that, that thing, that hull has been in existence with us, you know, the, the started as the predator line uh, mm-hmm. launched back in the, 2013 2014 time frame and we added pedals to it in 2016 so that thing's tried and true and um it's it's you know it's a mainstay in my lineup so really those are my top three and the ones that you'll find in my yard for fishing kayaks is the autopilot 136 the big water pedal and the salty nice uh you know another fun one that i like for uh, especially here uh, in the Midwest, we have a lot, you know, we have big rivers, Mississippi River, Ohio River, you know, so on. we have those big bodies of, of water like that. But for we have a lot more smaller rivers that if you go to other places in the country, they say that's that's a uh, that's a very that's like a stream or compared to a creek. But the skinny waters is uh, I like the loon as well. The loon is very fun, uh, especially if you're oh. doing a, if, if you're doing a float uh just bring in a couple of rods and some light tackle that's a fun vessel to fish out of too yeah that's actually I, I um my dad picked up a few kayaks a few years ago he does a lot of rving still and wanted a few kayaks that were easy for him to um load and unload and, and bring with his his camper and uh i directed him to those because for that exact purpose he's not you know he's he loves to catch fish he's not an extreme angler by any stretch of the imagination. He wants to get out there and have fun, but wants a comfortable seat, wants to be protected for the, from the elements. Cause I mean, even a main summer can be kind of cool. And uh, the, the loon is just such a pleasant boat to paddle um, and the seat. So dang comfortable. I mean, you can sit mm-hmm. in that thing for hours. Um, you know, it's got all the creature comforts you need. You get that removable work deck that you can stash some things in front of you and have your cup holder and you get a couple rod holders in it. If you get the angler version and, yeah, it's a great boat, and it comes in three sizes, and, um, you know, it's good for anybody in your family. Absolutely. Cool, man. Well, uh, you know, mate, it sounds like you got a lot of different uh, favorite fishing spots throughout the country. Let's uh, let's talk some, some stuff off the water. Let's talk about Maine. So when you think of Maine, and I don't – and I know this just for some experience, but Maine is almost – comparable if you were to say to like alaska there's a lot of uncharted territory especially once you start going further northeast towards the canadian border um in your in your own words uh wh- what give me three cities that you would want to visit while in maine oh uh, well it's funny you should say that uh it's a lot like alaska because i use that i i, I say that you know i feel like it's, <laughs> it's the lower 48 is alaska you know, in a lot of ways, it's uh, not a very populated state at all. Um, and so that was a really good analogy. And I use it. So um, <laughs> the three the three cities, well, cities is a, it's, uh, we, you know, we don't really have cities. I mean, our biggest city, I think, is Portland with maybe 70,000 people. So okay. our cities our cities are really like your towns. Uh, from yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Portland is awesome. I, you know, I grew up just south of Portland. Um, and lived on the north part of, you know, I lived uh, just outside of Yarmouth, Brunswick area. Just so it's about 20 minutes north of Portland before I, I moved up here. Um, and Portland's got everything you need. It's got an awesome airport that's easy to get in and out of. And it connects with, you know, Detroit, uh, all the New York uh, airports, Atlanta. So it's easy to, you know, get in from larger hubs. Um, and it's really, you know, everything that you want to experience in Portland is really right there. You know, our old port portion of uh, Portland is, you know, old brick cobblestone roads and, uh, you know, brick buildings that, you know, date back to the 17, 1800s. And wow. uh, it's uh, still an active fish port. Uh, so you got a lot of commercial fishing that's happening in and out of Portland. And 
Um, the, the restaurant scene, the brewery scene is incredible in Portland. Like if you want to go on a, on a food vacation, Portland is top notch. And having <laughs> traveled the world for, for various jobs, you know, Portland is hard to beat in terms of like its culinary um, experience. And, and if you enjoy beer and, and spirits, it's, you know, home to, you know, before microbrews were cool, like, you know, we were, we, we still had a lot of the microbrew thing happening before it, it really got trendy. So Portland's really cool. You get, you know, rugged coastline right there, great beaches just down the road. Um, you get, you know, you get all the feels of Maine right there in Portland with having a cultural experience. And again, it's like only two and a half hours, if that, from Boston. So, you know, if you wanted to come up and do a New England, you know, jaunt, you could work Portland in pretty easy. Uh, so Portland's a must. Um, outside of that, you know, I think, you know, I live in the greater Bangor areas where Old Town is located. Bangor is okay. like, Bangor is kind of like what Portland was 30 years ago. Like it's, it's close to breaking out and becoming a really cool trendy spot. You know, there's a lot going for it. A lot of great restaurants are starting to take root. We have a major, um, uh, music venue now that's a part of like the larger music venue tours. So we get a lot of uh, big acts here for uh, outdoor um on the water uh music venue um oh, cool called bangor waterfront concerts so we get a lot of great music and entertainment now but bangor is only an hour from acadia national park so you know nice. we also have a great airport that's pretty convenient um to, to get in and out of and i fly i split my time i only either 50 percent of the time i'm flying out of portland or flying out of bangor so both airports are great and uh, bangor is nice because you're centrally located in the state so if you wanted to go experience a day in the mountains and a day on the coast uh, or a couple days in the mountains and lakes and a couple days on the coast like you're centrally located there it's a great base camp um you know we have the penobscot river that flows uh past old town you know we're on an island where we're located here in, in old town and it flows past and through bangor brewery and then out to the coast um so you've got beautiful rivers lakes uh, you get the coast right here good food up here in Bangor and you're close to the end of uh, the Appalachian Trail, Baxter State Park, get the mountain region, you know, within an hour and the coast again within an hour. So Bangor is another great place. Um, outside of that, like those are the two major cities. I mean, we have a few, um, you know, larger cities between Bangor and Portland. You know, I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend them to go visit, but there's a lot going on in Maine uh, that can be accessed from either Portland or Bangor. So those are the two that I'd recommend. Awesome. And yeah, you did touch on it, uh, you know, talking about the culinary experience. So, you know, you you, you really did uh, work up uh, uh, Portland. So tell me, what are your three, if there's three restaurants I had to check out while I was in Maine, what am I going to uh, go look for? All right, that's easy. Um, you know, in Portland proper, my two favorites is uh, Duck Fat which okay. they, most of their menu is made, uh, most of the food is made using duck fat, whether it's fried in duck <laughs> fat or it's part of the, so the, like duck fat's fantastic, like five stars. I'd give that five stars. Like they're incredible. Cool. If you go, their duck fat fries are, you know, I, I, fries I can take it or leave it. Usually that's just an unnecessary filler with my meal. Their fries are freaking fantastic. So uh, I can't say enough about duck fat. If you're looking for like true main, you know, uh, culinary experience. I really enjoy uh, Eventide. Um, Eventide. Eventide Oyster Company. They uh, have probably the best lobster roll I've ever laid my lips on. So if you're <laughs> looking for like good seafood um, in a in a fine dining uh, setting, I, you know Eventide is is really really good. Um, Otto's Pizza is a uh, like a local pizza chain that makes like high end crafty sort of pizza is excellent um down in portland they have um uh oh, forgetting the barbecue place uh, it'll come to me but uh, you know we've got just about everything you want and uh you know the seafood uh options are a dime a dozen and anywhere you're gonna go is you're gonna have the freshest lobster right off the boat uh in portland because literally it's a, it's a working harbor and they're bringing lobsters in every day and so whether you're eating in Portland or you're up the coast in Rockland, Rockport, or Acadia National Park area, you're you're eating like the freshest seafood. Um, so yeah, you know if you're gonna buy oysters, clams, mussels, lobsters in Maine, they're fresh off the boat. It's excellent. There's so many great 
places. But I'd say Duck Fat and Even Tide are my two favorite restaurants in Portland. Then up here in Bangor, you know, I'm kind of a creature of habit. If I find something I like, I'll I'll go back on a regular basis. And my local favorite here in the Bangor area is Mason's Brewing Company. Um, okay. It's a working brewery um, with a great selection of beers. Uh, but uh, they, they have an awesome menu, a lot of great handhelds and, and, and uh, burgers. Um, their, uh, their, their appetizer game is strong. So, like, if I have somebody coming in, I have to entertain them for work. Like that's my go-to. Mason's is great. Nice. It's got a great. It's ba- it's set right on the Penobscot River, right across from Bangor Concerts a venue that I was talking about. So like if you cool. plan it right, you can listen to great music while you're on the waterfront there, and that's a great setting. So there's a few uh, gems like that in Bangor too, but Mason's is like my favorite. That's awesome. You know, having a setting like that, you know, the, those can be hard to come by. Um, you know, especially if you start getting out, you know, of the area you're describing and you know going to you know let's say for example milwaukee you know a lot of people they have what's called uh summer fest in milwaukee where it's outdoor concerts oh yeah but the the problem that you run into is you're either you either got to have a boat and be on be in the water listening or you're stuck under an underpass you know (laughs) standing on the street listening to music it's like oh you're gonna hear it but it's not not like the coolest setting, but that setting you described is pretty awesome. Um, you know what? I do have a question when it comes to the seafood. So is there opportunity uh, with it, whether it's uh, Portland or Bangor, where you can uh, catch and cook on site, uh, like lobster, uh, clams, crabs, so on and so forth? Like bring your catch into the restaurant sort of deal? Yeah. Yeah, yes, I have heard of it. I've never actually done it here, um, and I couldn't even tell you off the top of my head who does it. But yes, that does exist here okay. in Maine. I have done that, you know, like many other people. Like when I'm in Florida, I would catch something worth catching, sure. worth keeping. I'll I'll bring it to restaurants down there. But yeah, uh, definitely something that exists here. It's not as much like we don't our sport fishing scene here isn't as big as other places, and so. That's why I don't think it's advertised or known because it's not like you're having people come in and they're set up center console with a cooler full of fish after a day of, of sport fishing and want to go eat. It's more of like a working coastline. Um, and so I think there's less of that advertised, but you can definitely find restaurants up and down the main coast that will do that. Cool. Cool. All right, man. So the next thing, and you, you mentioned it once, uh, let's talk some breweries. Hmm. Yeah, I, I was trying to find a, an accurate stat before we hopped on this call to, to give you an idea how many brewers we have. But I know every state now likes to brag about how many breweries they have. But I think, you know, last I checked, Maine has uh, the highest per capita uh, microbrew, uh, microbreweries, I guess, in, in, in the United States or one of the top microbrew locations. So um, there's there's so many to choose from now. And, uh, you know, we have some that like Geary's and shipyard that existed long before, like the micro brewing scene kind of took off. Yeah. Um, so there's some that have been around forever. Sebago brewing company is another one that's been around forever. Um, but my favorites, you know, there's been a few that have come up in the last 10 years that are doing great things and, uh, they, they've got it figured out from, you know, a great selection of different beers. Um, but also like a great setting to go experience, you know, beer tasting. And so the few that, um, I have on my list that are my favorites, I I really like Orono Brewing, uh, here on Marsh Island. So Old Town and Orono are sister cities or like we're neighboring cities on the same Island. So the Penobscot basically cuts out Marsh Island and Old Town's on one end and Orono's on the other. So Orono Brewing is like a, uh, only a few miles down here from the factory and uh, they've got an awesome um, tasting room and they offer appetizers now and uh, the the owners are great and friends with a lot of us that work here at the at the factory and uh, they've got just awesome beers they're doing a lot of great things and they're involved in the community um, my second favorite is Bissell Brothers I don't know if you've heard of them but they're no they're I have a couple not. Of yeah, a couple locations. They've blown up. I think they've won a lot of awards in the last few years. They've got location in Portland and a location in the middle of nowhere, Milo, Maine, um, which is about an hour north of here in the middle of the woods. 
I guess they're, they're from Milo. That's why they have a, a tasting room up there, but they've really turned it into a destination of people like to go off that beaten path and have that experience and go taste their beer up in the woods. But they've got some incredible beers. Um, I love Bissell Brothers. Um, another one uh, that is uh, worth noting, and it's not on my list, but I just remembered them, is Maine Beer Company down okay. in, uh, they're, they're located in Freeport, Maine. Um, and uh, their beers are on the pricier side, but you know, after you're done your first sip, you understand why they've, they're a true <laughs> craft brewery. They got a lot of great options. And uh, like my favorite by them is their beer called Lunch. Um, and uh, so, yeah, main beer company is definitely on my top four. And then Mason's, you know, Mason's is a great restaurant, yeah. but they're a brewery first and foremost. And they're uh, like their hipster apocalypse is the beer that I go to for, from now. <laughs> and uh, they're, they're uh, a great brewery and they've got a lot of great things going there too. So those are my top three, but like you could, you could throw a rock in any direction and hit a brewery here. I, I swear. One one that uh, we do get commonly here in Chicago from Maine is Allagash. Yeah. Oh yeah. We, yeah. Allagash. Yep. Allagash. Yep. Allagash. We get, They're white. Okay. Yeah. The the, white. Yep. That's always uh, pretty much. I would say one out of five restaurants has it on tap or um, has it uh, ready to go. That's the biggest one we get from that part of the coast over here uh, quite a bit. Uh, yeah, and then uh, the, the Allagash White, what is that? A Belgian? It's a uh, Weiss. I, 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 yeah, yeah, I hate it. I, I, <laughs> it's, not my, it's not my jam. I know a lot of people that love that beer, and a lot of people yeah. ever, and I go, it's like, you're from Maine. I love the Allagash beer. I hate That's not my favorite flavored beer, and uh, like, I'm not a Hefeweizen or a Weiss guy. Um, so I, I don't like it, but they do make other beers. Like, I think they have a, actually a black which is a lager of some sort that's really really good. Yeah, um, we I see actually I did have that um about a month or two ago. It came around it came out around Halloween. Yeah, 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 yep. exactly. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, but yeah, yeah Allagash so, is, it has been around forever. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I did have that. That's um um one of their dark or it, actually it's um they call it a black IPA. Yes. Uh, yep. Is that one? Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah, really dude. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, I'm not a I, fan I, of, I of white like you. Yeah, yeah, white's not my my jam, but uh, they do have <laughs> a lot of great beers, and they they their brewery is really nice, um, and definitely like if they're in Portland. So if uh, you or any of your listeners visit Portland, I would definitely do a brewery tour of Allagash, um, and I think they do offer like like there's there's you can sign up for like a a, a bus brewery tour in Portland. There's so many breweries in and around the Portland area, and all of them are worth visiting. Bissell Brothers, uh, Allagash, Sebago, um, Peak, which is the one I've got handy and ready nice. to drink. That's, <laughs> that's that's another one of my favorites. Like like I was saying, I'm a creature of habit, and like I can go into – we've got a really nice gas station here, convenience store, that uh, carries everything, including the kitchen sink, for beer selection. And it's always like mind numbing. And uh, this is like my go to is like, I'll get the peak variety pack because it has all kinds of great stuff in it. But peak is another one there organic uh, uh, beer. I don't know what makes it organic exactly. But it, that's some good stuff too. That's another main beer. Peak. Cool. Well, yeah. speaking of, uh, of Maine, do you guys have any uh, vineyards uh, within your area for the ladies or for those who like to indulge in some uh, fermented fruit? Yeah, I think there are. There, we actually have, you know, we have a lot of apple trees and apple orchards here in Maine. So oh, it's, more of a, okay. it's more of a cider cider game up here. There are yeah. like hobby vineyards, but I don't know off the top of my head any like commercial or tasting sort of vineyards in Maine. Uh, well, that's not true. There's one up in Holton. I forget the name of it, but that's way up in northern Maine and uh, is uh, – is not something that um, I know much about or can recommend. Um, okay. I just know it exists, but yeah, vineyards really aren't a thing here. But there's a lot of like, um, there's a lot happening on the distillery side and like the hard ciders. Um, yeah, that was and, the next uh, one was uh, the distilleries. Yeah, yeah, and yep. um, yeah, we do have a lot. I'm not much of a, I'm not much of a hard alcohol drinker um so i i'm not a good one to to talk at length about recommending any but we do have quite sure. a few um 
options here in Maine, and it's definitely something that's trending um, here. And uh, you know, so like hard ciders and and um, you know local vodkas and things like that are definitely something that's cropping up, and I notice more of. Yeah. Cool. Uh, do you, do you know any names offhand of uh, any of those small batch distilleries? Yes, yeah, stand by. I uh, I'll tell you here. <laughs> Cold River Vodka in Freeport, Maine, is one that I used to drive by when I was going to my when I was reporting into my old job down in Freeport. Um, Cold okay. River Vodka, I've heard a lot of good things about, and then Maine Distilleries um, or Maine Craft Distilling uh, are two that are are also down in that area. But I've heard a lot of great things about them. Yeah, cool. Now, now you know I I know every town has its local go to. Um, watering hole is there any uh unique bars uh that you would recommend people check out like you know you, you said mason brewery had, had that scenery um but anything that's kind of unique to, uh to one place that uh would interest anybody oh man we've got so many really cool you know from dive bar to just like ski bar like we have a lot of great ski bars up in the mountains like uh you know if you're gonna go visit our mountains like sugarloaf mountain sunday river like sunday river brewing companies right at the end of their access road to their mountain and like the rack uh is a popular uh ski bar up at up at sugarloaf mountain um those two are like pretty legendary they can get pretty uh rowdy um you know <laughs> on the popular vacation weeks up 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 here so like i used to work up at sugarloaf mountain uh at ski resort and uh, the rack was like a hop in place. So I'd recommend like the rack if you're going to be visiting Maine, want like that ski bar experience. Um, aside from that, there are some really great spots down in Bar Harbor. Like if you're going to get, visit Acadia National Park, that's that's yep. right next to Bar Harbor, which is a just a just a gorgeous spot. And there's like a old fisherman bar there. Hold on, oh bar. There's a pretty epic one called the bar and uh that that one right there you know you, you bring the average age down when you walk into that place um but it's it's a scene and that's a that's a pretty special place too so i you know i'd, I'd give uh any bar a shot in bar harbor because you're going to get that old okay. fisherman crusty vibe uh which, <laughs> which we love around here um and then portland's got a pretty hop and bar scene in the old port so like you can bar hop there and there's a lot of great um irish pubs and and local uh fishing bars down there so yeah awesome you know and you had mentioned it so you know a lot of times off the water uh you know us who are fishermen and kayak we're, we're pretty recreational um and you mentioned the skiing part obviously that's in in season right now over by you guys. What other recreational activities do you guys have to offer uh, within Maine that people would be attracted to? Oh man, there's so much. Um, you know, the <laughs> traditional outdoor outdoorsman activities. You know, fishing, uh, hunting, ATVing, snowmobiling. Is a, yeah. You know, both ATV and snowmobile is a huge industry for us. Um, hiking, backpacking, paddling. Um, mountain biking, our mountain bike scene is blowing up. You know, a lot of the ski resorts have embraced mountain biking and uh, nice. built up infrastructure on the mountain to accommodate mountain biking. Uh, so there's all kinds of like, you know, human powered activities that you can recreate and do. Uh, but then, you know, like I was saying, like the uh, OHV, the snowmobile uh, ATV scene is huge here. My father-in-law actually is the uh, he manages the trail network for ATVing here in Maine, and uh, oh, our sweet. system you, you can you can ride all over the state on sanctioned trails in the summertime, and it's huge. Um, and then our snowmobile trails like connect Quebec and New Brunswick, and if you wanted to ride over from New Hampshire, like there's amazing um, you know pancake flat snowmobile trails um, all over the all over the state in northern Maine uh, in the wintertime. So. You know all kinds of great stuff, but I'd I'd be remiss if I didn't mention just you know Maine is covered in water. You know we've got uh, an incredible amount of lakes and ponds and rivers and and the coastline, and so you know the paddling opportunity here in Maine is incredible. Even if you're not an angler, 
Um, mm -hmm. You know, one thing worthy of calling out is uh, the Maine Island Trail Association, which is a, a remote um, primitive network of uh, campsites on our main islands off the coast of Maine that if you wanted to rent or bring up a, a touring kayak and go from island to island, you can connect, I think, up to 200 miles um, of uh, uh, paddling trail down our coast. So uh, our, our coastline is hard to beat and it's gorgeous. And um, so that's definitely something that if you're a paddler, an adventure paddler, um, definitely worth putting on your list. Um, you know, uh, we have the Allagash Riverway, which is a lot like uh, Boundary Waters experience. So, like your, oh, your sweet. Paddle, yeah, the paddling, uh, paddling the Allagash is pretty legendary, and that's a great canoe trip, multi-day canoe trip that you can do. Um, and if you wanted to add the lakes, you start at uh, Allagash Lake and you paddle. You know, I think ten days all the way to uh, the terminus of the paddling trip, and you can fish along the way. You got white water and uh you're camping and that's a that's a that's one that's on my list i have yet to do it um and my boys are almost old enough to where i'm gonna i'm gonna hire a guy to do it with my boys i think because the fishing and the adventure paddling on the allagash is like second to none so there's all awesome. kinds of places like that and with the end of the appalachian trail at uh, baxter state park on mount katahdin uh, our hiking scene is pretty big and we have a lot of through hikers that uh, come into our state and a lot of business that comes around uh and uh supports the the, the appalachian trail and, and people that are hiking that so all kinds Very of cool. stuff here nice man you, you you hit it on the head and then uh you know one of the things that i love most and when i say love and all my listeners everybody knows man the national parks are uh it's tattooed on me man so Acadia national park uh just touch briefly on it a little bit uh you know for those who who may not know Oh my gosh. It is one of the most beautiful. I'm a big national park buff too. I just actually took my family on a, a two week road trip out West. We rented an RV and, and visited a bunch of the national parks as a family this fall. It's, uh, and we got another, another one planned for the Southwest uh, in March. We're going to go visit all the South, the Southern Utah parks. Um, so like we'll all love five, you got to do all five. Yep. Yep. That's the plan. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, love national parks uh acadia is a, incredible i mean you've got mountains that spill into the ocean and so you've got hiking you've got biking you've got this old what they call the carriage trails which are just beautifully maintained dirt roads basically that you can bike you can hike that were the old carriage trails back in the 17 and 1800s on the island um, so you can you can connect to the different villages and different points of interest on these carriage trails via bike, which is just gorgeous and and uh, worth doing. The hiking is incredible. You got a beautiful sand beach called Sand Beach. That's you know if you go, just do a quick Google image of uh, Sand Beach, Acadia National Park, you'll see what I mean. But you've got emerald green water, beautiful white sand beach, and you're surrounded by um, rocky coastline and mountains. Uh, so Acadia's got so much going for it and uh, you get amazing campgrounds and you've got bar harbor right there so if you wanted to pop out of the park and go down and grab a nice bite to eat at a, a, a dive bar in bar harbor or a nice restaurant you've got that right there and um you know so everything from paddling biking hiking just beach going if you're a rock climber there's amazing rock climbing on on uh in acadia um and it's just great for the whole family and uh I'm, i find it I'm, I'm just super fortunate to only live an hour and 15 minutes away from the park and my family and i we spend a lot of time at acadia so can't say enough about it it's one of the most visited parks too i just learned so nice yeah yeah it's uh it's it's very scenic my uh one of my uh guys who i work with uh he just he actually took his rv he just bought a brand new rv and that was his first stop. So we were looking at pictures from uh, from over the fall when he was just there, yeah. and it's it's beautiful out that way. Yeah, if you can time it like mid September, the bugs are dead, most of the tourists are gone, and uh, it's peak <laughs> colors. Uh, so yep. like our foliage, our fall foliage is is an attraction unto itself. And if you can you know check off a national park and see the foliage at the same time, it's you know it's pretty magical. Awesome, man. Well, for is there anything else that you, you know that we haven't covered that you'd want to mention people to check out while they're in Maine? 
No, you know, I, Maine, I'm super proud to, to live here and find, you know, I'm very fortunate. And, uh, you know, anybody that's interested in Maine, you know, it's definitely something that you should add to your bucket list and move it up the bucket list so you're not too old when you experience it because it's, an, it's a sportsman's <laughs> paradise. It's great yeah. for the whole family. Um, and, uh, you know, it's uh, it, it has uh, brought us brands like Old Town. And uh, you know, really, I feel Old Town – uh encompasses the spirit of maine and vice versa so you know super proud of what we do here in in old town and thank you so much for you know inviting me on and to talk about old town and to talk about maine yeah. And, um yeah if you know any, any of your listeners listeners are interested oldtowncanoe.com follow us on uh, all the socials you see a lot of maine love on there because uh <laughs> we do a lot of what we do right in the backyard beautiful man yeah uh and you know, one of the uh, I, I do I have a lot of people who are uh, waiting for me to get out your way. Uh, a lot of guys who are in Connecticut with one of the uh, um, I'll, cats out the bag, but with one of the companies I'm sponsored with, uh, Stretching Lines, uh, they're based out of Connecticut. Uh, then I'm sure you probably know uh, the Anirond the Upper New York Anirondacks uh, chapters uh, for the kayak fishing scene up there. Uh, Justin Hausner. I, so I owe Damien, Justin, and now you, you know, coming out and uh, making a trip out there to, to all hang out with you guys. So I'll be making yeah, my way out. up there soon. <laughs> but, uh, but you know what? It's uh, it's coming up on a holiday. You know, you got a couple more days left. Let's uh, let's have a little beer here. So, uh, guys, you know the segment. One sip. Everybody knows the rules. Um, so this is brought to you by Rocktown. Uh, and my guest already had already said what he wants to say. So, just recap: What are you drinking? I'm drinking the Winter IPA by Peak Brewery, which is an organic beer company here in Maine. It's delicious. All right, cool. Uh, this one we're gonna be doing one I got my hands on. I this is uh, Life's Blood. This is by Old Irving Brewing here in Chicago. Um, this is a pretty cool. Actually, let me get my fingers out the way so I can show the the label. It's actually really cool. Oh, that's pretty badass right there. And then uh, the way they did the Chicago flag is pretty sweet too, huh? And it's right, yeah. right here. Yeah. So oh, yeah. the way they did the four star. And if anybody was always curious, four stars is always for Chicago. The four stars uh, that are within within our flag. So that's why you have four star fishing. So there you go. Um, That's but cool. this one, this one is, uh, a dark Bach lager, uh, and you'll, you'll see after I, after we, uh, drink it up. So, uh, so Ryan, all I really need you to do is take your sip and tell me what it tastes like and, uh, a scale of one to five, give it a number. So whenever you're ready, my man, I'm ready as well. Well, it tastes like the end of the day. <laughs> You know, this uh, this is pretty. It's like notes of caramel uh, in this one. This winter IPA, um, it's pretty mellow. It's like a basic IPA, but kind of a caramel finish. Sweet, N nice notes on the back end. All right, brought to you by Rocktown Adventures here in Northern Illinois. Ah, uh, when it says life's blood, it is life's blood it is refreshing. So, um, for those who are not familiar with the Bach, um, Shiner is probably the biggest brewer who makes the best Bach. Um, and what it is, it's a very malty, uh, hints of caramel, but this one has a very smoky profile to it. Ooh. So, so what this really, if I had to give it a true, uh, body profile, I would say, um, it is a multi, but it's roasted malts. So that's where the smokiness comes from. Uh, and then it has a very, um, it has a very sweet and um, like a bittersweet taste on the back end because of the smoke. It's very, it's very good. And I, I love smoky stuff. This would pair, this pairs very well with like, if you're having like a steak dinner or any kind of uh, or a game, so this would go well with it. Um, out of five, because of 
my preference for smokiness. The only thing that I don't like about it is not much, uh, but I give it a four and a half out of five. Cheers. Yeah, I, forgot, I forgot to rate mine. I'd say it's a good three and a half out of five. Good standard IPA. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, man, we are at the end of the show, and this is your opportunity uh, to uh, say, "Hey, mom, look, I'm on. A, I'm on a podcast. I'm I'm on Waypoint TV." Um, so, anybody you want to give uh, sponsors, family, anybody uh, you want to give a shout out to? You know, I'm just uh, grateful to uh, my company, Johnson Outdoors Watercraft, yep. which employs me. And owns Old Town and Ocean Kayak. I'm grateful for the opportunity to represent and uh, work for such legendary brands. Um, thank you. Know. Hi, Mom. Hi, <laughs> wife. Denise, my wife. Uh, love you. No, but I appreciate uh, the chance to come on and uh, to talk with you. It's nice to finally meet you. You know, we've had some exchanges Absolutely. over Facebook, but it's nice to finally meet you. Yeah, the same man. I've been looking forward to uh, talking with you and getting to talk to you about uh, about travel and, and you know about everything cool about Maine. This was a this was a great opportunity. And this I appreciate you hopping on with me. Uh, appreciate it a lot. So um, you know, without any further ado, you know, um, if you have any anybody has any questions, you can reach out to me or you can reach Ryan. Uh, why don't you drop some uh, social media handles? Where can people find you at? Sure. Uh, at Ryan S, as in Scott Lilly. That's R Y A N S L I L L Y um, at Instagram. Um, similar for Facebook, I think. Uh, but yeah, feel free to reach out. We'd love to connect with you. If you got questions about any of our watercraft um, or just want to catch up and talk fishing, I'm there. Beautiful. And, uh, you know, as a final ending note to the show, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors, Rocktown Adventure, Yak Gadget, Pelican, 153 Bait Company. And uh, above all, man, I just want to wish everybody a happy and prosperous new year. I hope you catch your best PBs, or I hope you get to go to places that you've been wanting to explore your entire life. So with that, we'll see you next time on Off the Water. Peace. See you, everybody. Tight.